Hello my dear friends, welcome back to the channel Perfume Guru and today we are looking at a perfume classic from the house of Kerala. This is Shalimar or the Parfum version and it is one of the most phenomenal perfumes when it comes to creativity and leaving an impression on the fashion industry, the fragrance industry. It was created by the master Jacques Kerala. Let's break it down. Dear friends, I am in the mecca of perfumery. Now this is the history of, you know, of perfumery right here in front of me. And uh, you can guess this is the Museum of Perfumes right in the heart of Barcelona, Spain. And I'm just going to take you on a brief tour through most of what they have. And it will take you, uh, you know, it will take you on an emo emotional journey, which is absolutely indescribable in words. Enjoy. So starting here, we have the whole Gorland range. There's Nahima, Shalimar, Mitsuko, Jiki, all these classics. Just look at those beautiful flacons. There's a large Shalimar bottle up there. Here is the classical Shalimar in the background. Then we have Jiki. All these are old Gorlan bottles. Look at these bottles. I think these are absolutes. Musky Seen, Sidra, Shipra, Umbra. <laughs> so interesting, guys. So, guys, this perfume has been around since the year 1925. I mean, in the next seven years, it's going to complete a century. That's, that's quite an achievement, in my opinion. The fragrance used to look beautiful. Initially, in, you know, back in those days, it was housed in a proper Bakra crystal bottle, which is uh, basically a special type of glass. And it's, it's very precious. It's like a collector's item. So this was like a big deal. Perfumes were not so common. I mean, it wasn't like everyone could afford perfumes. It was definitely a luxury. It was not like a drugstore thing that it is now. So Shalimar has quite a history, especially uh, with, uh, you know, it was made by the master Jacques Garlin. He's considered to be one of the greatest perfumers of all time. And um, uh, there was a time when, uh, you know, perfume making or, or creating perfumes was at its peak. I mean, Francois Coty, Jacques Garlin, all these big names, they were make, making perfumes and perfume was not a big thing. Slowly the word spread around from Europe during World War, you know, um, Jacques Garlin himself fought in the World War and lost an eye and uh, he was blinded in one eye. Then he even lost his son in the Second World War. I mean, this is... Uh, 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 a guy who does not like public attention, who is very passionate about things and definitely keeps his life private. So he was a very mysterious kind of man and he had a knack for improving older formulations that his counterparts were creating. And um, he created this wonderful girl in art accord, which people talk about uh, when uh, it comes to Gerlin classics. So this Gerlin art accord, what is it? What is so special about it? It's basically the house signature, let's say. It's something that... Uh, it's like an artistic identification. You can make out through paintings that uh, he might be the artist. I mean, you look at the way something is painted and you get an idea that, okay, this contains the signature of that artist. Similarly, in perfumes, there are uh, these, these uh, very noticeable uh, background accords on which, or, or let's say the foundation accords that you'll find through most uh, perfume houses, which are dedicated perfume houses, niche perfume houses. Gerlin also makes other products, but essentially it's just a perfume house. So I consider it a niche brand. And this house signature basically contains a few accords like bergamot, rose, jasmine, tonka bean, iris and vanilla. And these are essentially found in uh, many of their older perfumes and especially Shalimar. I mean, Shalimar was supposed to contain a lot of vanilla. Some people even speculate that this was created out of an accident. Uh, anyway, let's spray it on and see what the hype is all about. But before we begin, let me just remind you, this is a women's perfume. Why am I talking about it? Because I think it's, it's a beautiful perfume classic that even men can wear. I know it, it's kind of weird, but in perfumes, that, that boundary really does not exist. Because if you look at the classical notes of Shalimar, it included some really heavy notes that you find in artisanal perfumes these days, especially from the houses like Arige Ladore, Papillon, um, Artisan and all these, you know, these, these rare 
in the houses which utilize some of the most heavy natural materials known to man and um, Shalimar had civet, it had musk, it had a lot of rose, vanilla and all those things. And today's market, if you compare today's perfumes to these, uh, these old classics, you'll see a dramatic change because today's perfumes are more uh, clean, more um, public friendly, you can say light. And uh, you, do not, you do not get that flamboyance, that richness which was once associated with high societies. So let's spray it on and let's see how it smells today. Of course, it has gone many reformulations. It's undergone many reformulations. So that's one thing that you need to be aware aware of. It's not going to smell like it used to way back. But still, wow, this is this is fabulous. This is fabulous. I mean, this is one of the best, uh, 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 you can say, affordable perfumes. Definitely affordable because you get uh, 50 ml for around 5,000 rupees, Indian rupees. And uh, the 90 ml bottle, we are talking about the Parfum, of course, is around 6,000 rupees. Uh, uh, retail price, you can also find it online, Amazon, whatever, your website of choice, your online uh, retailer of choice. But make sure you buy this product at a proper outlet, not just on, you know, from, from, from websites that um, sell these, uh, these um, uh, let's say, unboxed products or products which have uh, which are on sale for like 45%, 50%. This, this perfume is one of the highest selling perfumes uh, in the world. So, I mean, finding an old bottle, I mean, it could be risky. And there's a lot of chase uh, for vintage items. I don't know how the vintage will smell uh, as of today. I know it's a collector's item. I mean, it's, it's more about nostalgia, more about love for perfumes, love for collecting old things than actually being able, uh, being able to get a bottle that you can wear, a perfume that you can wear, a, 19, a perfume from let's say 1940s, 50s that, that you want to wear today. Of course, that's going to be risky. It's going to be a health hazard. And uh, of course, not all material in this perfume was natural. And Jacques Guerlain was basically popular, very, very popular. In fact, he was known for creating some of the best, um, uh, he, was, he, he was known to create the best harmony between naturals and synthetics. And uh, most of these perfumes have uh, uh, some natural accords, some synthetic accords, but the way this perfume smells, it's absolutely glorious. I mean, this perfume is all about balance, the finesse, the way everything has been put together to create an overall effect. I mean, the individual notes, they don't shine separately, but it's just a whole bouquet that you can enjoy. And it's such a, a, a lively fountain of joy, such, such, such a nice, sophisticated, mysterious kind of scent which is rich, which is uh, extremely attractive um, and I would say um, this, this could be a personal signature for someone who has a very bold character, a very uh, strong presence, a strong aura as we say, a lady with a lot of confidence, definitely a mature one or a young lady with a lot of class, with a lot of uh, uh, charisma let's say. And uh, the opening of the scent is is probably one of the most beautiful citrus openings that you'll ever experience in a perfume. The weather out here right now is cold, so definitely I can get the finer nuances as well. I don't think it's, it's, it's a hot weather scent. This is definitely um, best worn in a pleasant climate, in a cold climate. A lovely citruses, I mean there's, uh, if, if I read out the notes, there's bergamot, lemon and mandarin at the top. So basically you have the citrus aspect, you have the bitter aspect, you have um, uh, you have the sweet aspect coming from the mandarin and there's also uh, the water absolute of Neroli. And uh, it's just a fantastic opening. It's very refreshing. I also sense some powderiness in it. it it's kind of, it, it's got a nice bitter sort of powderiness. Of course, there's, there's some flowers in here, but you really cannot pinpoint which and the dry down of this magnificent scent becomes uh, slightly powdery with that lovely uh, gentle kind of vanilla, but it's not nutty at all. It's not at all a gourmand scent. I won't even say it's semi gourmand and, and I feel it's probably the best usage of vanilla in a perfume that I have experienced till now. The other one was Sublime Vani from the House of Creed. That was a beautiful, gentle, smoky, almost watery kind of vanilla. And you get, you get um, a more, uh, let's say, a richer version or a more 
a thicker, denser, cloudier version of that accord in this perfume, in the dry down, and it just flows. It just flows. It just keeps on going. So the sillage is is moderate to good with this fragrance. So you'll get a proper sillage. It will leave a beautiful scent trail if you are in a closed space. And um, and um, I think the performance is definitely eight to twelve hours in a cold climate and probably in a hotter climate. I mean, it would be a stretch to say let's say six to eight hours. It's such a lovely perfume. I think this is one perfume which is very simple. It's not too complex. I mean, there's no uh, depth in it, no such depth in it that you get with uh, uh, these, these essential oils or natural perfumes, a very complex perfume notes. It also has a very fluffy layer of powdery muskiness to it. Almost feels um, like uh, Johnson & Johnson's baby powder, that, that quintessential Johnson's and Johnson baby powder note, you you get that you get that in a in a huge dose. I think that's the white musk and vanilla doing the uh, thing. But overall, when you when you talk about the scent, you are looking at the atmosphere that it creates. Uh, when you smell this fragrance, all your your nose, your olfaction gets hit by all the notes together. So that that balance, that that the way the har the harmony in the scent is absolutely palpable and brilliant. It has a golden shimmer to it that will uh, really impress you. That will really comfort you. I think it's one of the best comfort scents coming from a house like Gela. I mean, I've had multiple perfumes from this house, uh, especially the ones by Thierry Wasser have been quite basic and quite disappointing. But this truly shows the class of Jacques Gela. Of course, it's not the same formula. It would have smelled absolutely different. Uh, if we if we look at a Shalimar classic, but today's Shalimar is still, I think, one of the best perfumes for women ever, from young people to the older generation to uh, say let's say a person in her 30s, 40s, they truly deserve to wear this scent. So if you have to gift a beautiful perfume to your wife, to your partner, um, this Valentine's, this could be. Uh, in my humble opinion, one of the best gifts that you can still get. Of course, you don't get the Bakra crystal bottle, you don't have all that fancy presentation, uh, but the scent in itself holds quite a lot of memory, quite a lot of uh, class. The passion is just palpable. It's a beautiful fragrance to have. And uh, as a man, would I truly wear it? Why not? I, I, I see it as a very beautiful niche unisex fragrance that anyone can wear. Of course, there's a lot of femininity attached to it and um, it has been, it's, it's always been glorified or put out there uh, as uh, a strong woman's fragrance. So that thing is there, that bias definitely comes to mind when, when you're wearing this fragrance. But seriously, if you're, if you're uh, one of those people who really doesn't care, the only thing that matters to you is smelling good and feeling good. This fragrance is perfect for someone like you. I would definitely wear it, but it would smell uh, divine on uh, you know on our um, ladies I gifted this bot bottle to my mom basically but I still sometimes uh, steal and wear it because it's just so classy it feels it has a very amouage-ish feel I mean let's talk about the perfumes like amouage dia for women amouage gold for women I'm talking about the rich old days when there were no reformulations um, and no problems with using ingredients. I mean, these regulations hadn't um, spoiled the whole experience, but it's it has that amouage-ish feel, exotic, rich, exuberant, opulent. I mean, it's trying, the Shalimar, the name, it comes from the Shalimar Gardens, which Shah Jahan, the emperor, Shah, the great Mughal uh, emperor Shah Jahan built for his wife, for his beloved wife, Mumtaz Mahal, the same uh, person uh, who, who made... Uh, 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 this one, the Taj Mahal, it's, it's the same emperor. So you can imagine the passion with which he created this thing. And that was the inspiration that Jacques Gela uh, got. And that inspired him, that whole story, love story, his obsession with, with his partner, with his love, that inspired the creation of this fragrance. However, Jacques Gela never visited India. That's, that's a real, really big surprise because fragrance truly is reminiscent of those rich, days of royalty in India. I mean, the Indian sub subcontinent, it was, uh, it was very rich. It was very, very rich. 
the amount of spices that have been blended in with the lovely citrus notes and uh, the Indian and Tahitian vanilla, there's white musk. It's absolutely brilliant, guys. I mean, this is a fabulous perfume, definitely a masterpiece that everyone should experience irrespective of whether they are going to buy it or not. Definitely experience this perfume once in your life because it's, it's a classic and it's still a classic, I would say. I hope you enjoyed today's review and we'll be back for more. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.